All right, let's look at the second part of this uh, chapter, which deals with heart physiology. And we're going to start off with the cardiac cycle. The cardiac cycle is a rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the heart. And I'm going to give you a couple terms that you've heard before. Uh, one is systole, and the other is diastole. And you've probably heard those in relationship to blood pressure, uh, but they originate here in the heart. So what systole means, this is a phase in a heart, uh, this is a phase when a heart chamber wall contracts. And so if we think about that with blood pressure, if we're pushing blood out of the heart, more blood's in the blood uh, vessels, the blood vessels are gonna have a higher blood pressure because of that. And diastole is a phase when a heart chamber wall relaxes. So if it's relaxing, blood is filling into that chamber, and so there's less blood in the blood vessels, so our blood pressure will go down. All right, so both the atria are going to contract uh, and relax at the same time. All right, and both the ventricles are going to contract at this and relax at the same time. All right, but when the atria are contracting, they are pushing blood down into the ventricles. All right, so the ventricles have to be relaxed in order for that to occur. All right, and when the ventricles are, relax, are, are contracting, they're pushing blood up and out of the heart. And at that same time, blood is filling into those atria. So when we look at the heart, we're going to see the atria contract, then the ventricles contract. Then the atria contract, then the ventricles contract. Okay? So that's how it works. So when the atria are contracting, the ventricles are relaxed. And when the ventricles are contracting, the atria are relaxed. All right? So our average heart rate is about 70 times uh, 75 beats a minute. It's the average. But there is a typical range, which is 60 to 100 beats a minute. All right. So let's take a look at the uh, pathway of blood. Let's go to this picture. Now let's go back to that one. It's a little larger. All right? Now... I'm going to talk about this as blood going from one area to the next and then back again. But I want you to point, I want to point out to you, the blood's going to enter the right atrium and the left atrium at the same time. Blood's going to be pushed down through the ventricles at the same time and then pushed up and out of those ventricles at the same time. All right, so we're going to start this off in the right atrium. So blood enters that right atrium from the superior and inferior vena cavus, all right, and also from the cardiac veins. In order for that to occur, that right atrium has to be relaxed, all right, uh, so it fills with blood. Now, this blood is low in oxygen and high in carbon dioxide, and that's because it just came from the body, all right? Next, when those atria fill, they're going to push blood uh, through that uh, bicuspid or tricuspid valve into the right ventricle. The right ventricle has to be relaxed in order to fill it with blood. Once it fills with blood, it's going to contract and it's going to push blood through the pulmonary semilunar valve into the pulmonary trunk. And from here, that blood is going to go to the lungs. So it moves from the pulmonary trunk to the pulmonary arteries to the capillaries in the lungs. All right. And so in the lungs here, these capillaries are going to surround small little uh, air sacs called alveoli. So this is showing an alveolus. Here's another alveolus. All right. So our lungs aren't two large sacs, they're many, 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 many small sacs. And so these capillaries um, cover over those alveoli. And this is where gas exchange is going to occur. So this is an alveolus here, here's a capillary. So oxygen diffuses from the alveolus into the blood, carbon dioxide diffuses in the opposite direction. Okay, so going back to this picture. So now what we have in those capillaries is blood that's high in oxygen, low in carbon dioxide. And so we see that with that color change there, right? And so blood will move from those capillaries to the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. The left atrium has to be relaxed in order to fill with blood. Once it fills with blood, it's going to contract and push blood through the bicuspid valve into uh, the left ventricle. The left ventricle has to be relaxed in order for that to occur. Once it fills with blood, it will contract and it's going to push blood into the aorta, into uh, the arteries, and from there it goes to uh, capillaries all over the body, which are next to body cells. And so here we're going to have gas exchange occurring again. And so here oxygen will diffuse into the body cells, carbon dioxide will diffuse from the body cells into the blood, all right? And then blood will move uh, from those capillaries to veins to the superior and inferior vena cava, and we start this whole process over again, all right? So getting into the right atrium. So blood will move from the right atrium to the right ventricle, 
to the lungs, from the lungs to the left atrium, uh, left ventricle, out to the body, and then from the body back to the right atrium, uh, right ventricle, to the lungs, and so, right? And as I said before, when blood is entering the right atrium, it's also entering the left atrium at the same time. So that blood is then being pushed down into the ventricles at the same time, and then being pushed up and out of the heart at the same time. All right, let's take a look at heart sounds. So heart sounds uh, are due to the vibrations in the heart tissue that is due to the closing of the valves. So what you're gonna hear in this, uh, let's just go ahead and go back to uh, this picture works fine. All right, so what you're gonna hear is this lubbed up sound. So lubbed up, lubbed up, lubbed up, all right? So the lub is the first sound that we hear. And this is made when the atrioventricular valves are closing. So these valves right here, all right? So this is occurring. So when these valves are closing, that's when the ventricles are contracting. So when the ventricles are contracting to push blood up and out, those valves close to prevent backflow. The second sound is the dup sound. And this is made when the semilunar valves close. So these valves here, all right? So uh, when those valves close, that's when the ventricles have completed their contraction. So they've uh, pushed as much blood out of those chambers as they're going to push. So really those heart sounds that we hear, the, that loved up sound, both of those come from the beginning of ventricular contraction and then the end of ventricular contraction. Now, uh, sometimes you might see, you know, or have a doctor uh, move the stethoscope around on you. So one, they check out your heart rate. Uh, you know, if they move it on your chest or especially on your back, they're checking out your lungs. But sometimes they're gonna move it around just to check the sounds of your different valves as well. And they can hear those valves at different locations on your chest.